My name is Stuart Matthews from the Proper DIY YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to show you how to tile a floor and give you some tips and tricks along the way. I would recommend watching the other videos in this series which shows you how to cut tiles, set them out, mix adhesive and lots of other things that you'll need to know how to do before tiling a whole floor. So today I'm in my bathroom tiling the floor and I'm going to be using a grey adhesive to match my grey tiles and an 8mm notched trowel. Now this is a little bit bigger than the 6mm trowel that I've been using for the wall tiles which means that I'll get a deeper bed of adhesive under the tiles which is what I'm going to need for the bigger tiles and it also gives me a little bit more room to move and even up any of the lumps and bumps on my floor. But before I lay any tiles the first thing I need to do is to give the floor a really really good clean. Before laying any adhesive, it's important to remove any dust that's gathered on the floor for maybe the work you've been carrying out in the room so the adhesive has got a chance to bond to the floor properly. And also remove any splatters of adhesive or grout that may have dropped like I have here from your wall tiling that's now hardened on the floor and could become a high point and stops the tiles sitting nice and level on the adhesive. You would have just seen me re-establish this centre line with a chalk line. I've just marked it with a pencil just so I can see it better and I've put my perpendicular line to that as well. And I'm going to start with a full tile here on sort of course three. And I've already marked the halfway point for a tile here so I can put a few in this area. The reason I'm not starting next to the wall is that you can't trust that a wall is perpendicular to the rest of the room. And I've just measured mine and it's maybe eight or ten millimetres out between the centre and the corner. So I don't want to work from the wall else everything else is going to be out. So just like wall tiles where you start with a second course and go up and then only then do you come back and cut the first course. I'm doing exactly the same here. I'm starting with the second and the third rows and only then will I come back and cut this. This is just under the width of a tile so those will be cut to suit. So I've got everything in mind. I know exactly where I'm going. So now's the time to mix up some adhesive and start laying. I'm starting to lay in the middle of my floor adjacent to my setting outlines and at this stage I'm only putting down enough adhesive to lay a tile at a time until I have a few more established. It's important to carry out the final pass with the notch trowel in just one direction which will help the air in the ridges escape from either one side or the other. I place the tile and make sure it's lined up with my setting outlines in both directions before giving it a push and a twist to collapse the ridges and bed it into the adhesive so the adhesive is supporting at least 80% of the tile area. I can now start working away from this first tile in each direction, still using my setting out lines for reference. At this stage, with only a couple of tiles down, it's still easy to move the first one you put down off from its correct position, so you need to keep checking that it's still where it should be and adjust it if needed. With a few tiles in place, I can start putting in my levelling wedges as I go along. Just like laying wall tiles, I think it's easier to clean up any adhesive that's got onto the tiles or come through the grout lines as you go along rather than leave it until it sets, including any that's got onto the wall. With a couple of rows set in place, I return to the gap that I've left and measure and cut the tiles to suit. Two, six, four. Two, six, nine. These tiles I've cut 7 to 8 millimetres smaller than my measurement to ensure I've got enough room for a spacer between it and the previous tile and a gap of just a few millimetres next to the wall. Rather than measuring every tile for a cut there is another way of doing it and I'll show you that now and it's fairly straightforward. If we put a whole tile on the tile we've already laid 
and then get another tile on top of that and slip it up until it touches the wall then if we mark and cut this tile this will fit exactly into that space however we don't actually want it to fit exactly because we need a gap between the tile and the last tile that's the spacer and it's also good to have a gap between the tile and the wall and that's for two reasons first of all if the floor expands or moves a little bit we want a little bit of a gap of a few millimeters so it doesn't crush or touch those tiles the wall tiles and damage them also to have a little gap there is really convenient because what I like to do is to put a bead of silicon in between the floor and the wall tiles in the corner there and to have a little gap means it goes into that gap and it's got something to key into and something to hold against so when we're carrying out this method we do need to move the tile away from the wall slightly to allow for those two gaps and I would suggest around about seven millimeters rather than measuring seven millimeters there I've been looking around for something seven millimeters thick that I could use as a packer and I've come up with something that I've got lots of and that's broken bits of tile so this is exactly seven millimeters so if I just pop those in there between the floor tile and the wall tile push them up flush now draw my line then when I cut this tile I should have exactly the right size gap Please check out my other video in this series where I show you how to use a tile cutter like this and carry out lots of other types of common cuts. And don't forget the most important thing, to wear your safety glasses whenever you're cutting or filing tiles. So after everything's had a night to cure, I can knock off the clips and give everything a bit of a clean up. That, I think, is looking rather nice. And obviously, remember to keep your wedges for the next time you tile. I hope I've given you some help with your floor tiling, and I will see you in the next video.